We had no clear idea where we were last night, but this is where we woke up. In the seaside town of Paul, it faces northwest to the wide open mid-Atlantic, where the surf pounds the coast and the valley opens up from the jagged mountains. We were hosted by Damiano at his freshly renovated inn or family residence called Tecrita. He served us breakfast of fresh island papaya, bananas, cheese, omelet, bread, and papaya jam, donuts, and fresh brewed coffee from the island. Beautiful breakfast here with Damiano. <laughs> and Damiano in his cool little hotel joint here on the balcony. It's amazing. Do come here, do come here. Coffee from the island. And of course, we have our German friends <laughs> who are here. I'm going to forget them. They're also sailors. Wow. Wow. So we and the German sailors, Andres, Ricky, Martin, and Karina, set off. Damiano showed us the local transport. We had a choice between being inside or out. We chose the open air option pickup truck converted into public transportation, commonly known as an alugare, a form of collective taxi. They are privately owned small businesses crisscrossing the islands, delivering citizens' goods and tourists to the many corners of Cape Verde. Ready to start the adventure trip. Yes. With the German sports apparel designers. <laughs> One white can, African. White African. <laughs> <laughs> the Germans are from central Germany. The girls were apparel designers working for big German sports brands. Andres, a mechanical engineer, and Martin, a sailor, who'd already circumnavigated the world. And now, like us, they are modern nomads, each couple on their own vessel. After Cape Verde, they will also be heading to West Africa, and not the Caribbean. Transportation regulations seem pretty basic here. You get a truck, put some benches in the back, maybe a canopy, and a licensed driver at the wheel. The price is fixed according to the final destination, about two bucks a head. This type of transportation system could never be in Europe or the US. We would all be belted in, driven in air-conditioned vans, which are available at a much higher rate, by the way. But this is what I love about so-called underdeveloped nations. There are still many liberties. They may be less safe, but it gives freedom for small businesses to flourish and thrive. Apart from a few bags and gas stations, corporate giants have not yet set their big heavy feet on the country. And imagine if there was a foreign investment invasion. The streets here would be lined with global powerhouses. Sorry, but there are no fast food joints, coffee bars, international hotel chains, or insurance reps. Sure, they would provide jobs, but Cape Verde abolished slavery nearly 200 years ago. And they don't seem eager to be enslaved by the system. So after a bumpy ride along a rugged coast, we arrived in Punta del Sol. This is a tourist town, but not so inundated by our kind. And here, it seems, the vibe is set by the nation's motto, Cape Verde, no stress. Well, as you can see, that's definitely Cape Verdean wisdom. And uh, this guy's got it together. We have to come back here and try some food. We came here to begin another journey by foot. There's another highly recommended trail to follow starting in Punta del Sol. The trail is extremely well maintained. There's plenty of room to walk or push donkeys or goats along. I thought I'd seen some pretty stunning and amazing places in the Canaries, which were. But this is like almost even more. That. And then down there is a little, cool little pork farm. You can even go by car. My Euro fears are kicking in here. Not much passing room for the Elu gear. This has to be one of the most uh, treacherous roads, I would think. Wow. Which does not seem to affect the driver in the least.
The vertical drop here is, well, I don't know, whatever. Let's agree that it's really high and straight down. And prime real estate for these Cape Verdeans who are taking full advantage of their strategic position. Good business is all about location, location, location. And what about this location? This is Fontainas at the end of the road, if you choose to go motorized. Well, I'm happy to be on my own uh, two-leg drive and then some pickup truck here. Fuck me. I'm just getting tired of saying incredible, astonishing, amazing. You may be also, but what else can one say? Wow. Estupendo. Increíble. Incroyable. Fabuleux. Génial. This is a popular tourist destination, but where are they? The Germans are here, and they've got beer! We need more! Yes, more beer! They tend to come in scheduled groups led by local guides, mostly ambitious trekking Germans and finely finicky French. Luckily, we dodged them all. Everybody, but this is the life. <laughs> the real couple bed. Yeah, real Cape Bird life, man. <laughs> Our cool German friends turned around to head back to their boats, and we chose to continue on. The trail was calling us. It was addictive. Like anything else that's really good and not good for you. Once you start, it's hard to stop. So that was a little stop by the village. Now we're going, continuing on this trail to another village. Not that walking is that bad for you, but my legs were getting a serious jolt. Me and Nat were in serious pain the night before and getting up and out of bed was sheer pain and a reminder we were old stiffs. Well, at least me, I'm old. Surprisingly, once we got walking again, it wasn't so bad. It's really amazing how the body adapts if you push it a bit. And we had no problem pushing on. on we had to. We'd catch an alligator or any ride available at the next town. Well, this was the next town, and the only offering was food and drink. We asked how far was the town after, and we were told about half an hour walk. We could eat and drink later. This was a small part of the trail we had walked down. The trail continues on and on, twisting along the contours of the dramatic coast. And 
this was the next town. But I couldn't see any cars or pickup trucks. I inquired and the man chuckled. No ride here. In fact, there was no road. We had to continue on. Next town, more than two hours walk. We had not consulted any map or information before we set off. It's the way we ride, man. We go with the flow and this trail kept flowing up and down and around and around. A young man caught up with us, obviously since he was local and fit. I thought she keeps stopping when, we, uh, when she talks. We have to keep going. We have like an hour and a half to walk and we got about an hour and a half left of sun. How they made a path here, I have no idea. Check this out, it's just like carved out of the rock and then piled up on the edges. What a feat of engineering here. And another obvious observation, Natasha chatted him up. He was heading to the next town and was happy to accompany us. Problem was, Natasha could not walk and talk at the same time. She's always stopping. So I went ahead to shoot and they caught up. Well, we still got a ways to go, man. Just goes up and down. This is crazy. My legs aren't so young anymore, obviously. Kind of like spaghetti gadetti. And we got to go all the way up there to get around that mountain and the ocean. God knows where this will take us. All right. I figured Nat was so slow, I'd catch up easily. Well, I hadn't caught up as expected. They were way ahead. See them there? Yeah, that, that's them. Now, how the hell was Nat going so fast? She must have gotten help from the young fella. I really had to catch up. Night was falling. And where were we going exactly? Could we eventually get a ride or find a room? And what the hell were we going to get ourselves into next?